Tipping points, a seemingly popular topic, and still many assume that they are unlikely. Yet, evidence that shows the pressing nature of tipping points is mounting. The IPCC introduced tipping points in the sphere of climate change two decades ago now, and yet we keep getting closer to them. A 2024 paper by Floris et al. shows increasing worries in the Amazon, which could trigger a tipping point. But what are tipping points exactly? A tipping point can be defined as a critical threshold in a system that when crossed can have cascading effects. A tipping point is where in a part of the climate system, just a little bit of extra warming could nudge it into a different state, an irreversible change. Certain attributes of tipping points are a large spatial scale, self-perpetuating change, abruptness, irreversibility, and significant impacts. As ecosystems approach a tipping point, they often lose resilience while still remaining close to equilibrium until that happens. In 2008, Lenton et al. identified nine global tipping points, with more recent research identifying up to 15, including regional ones. Different tipping points have different risks, impacts, and uncertainties. So why are we so worried? Essentially, Make et al. explained that current global warming lies within the low end of five climate tipping points and certainty ranges. But the warmer it gets, the likelier we are to cross tipping points. The dotted lines here are our current best estimates of where the tipping points could happen for each environmental system. Six climate tipping points become likely within the 1.5 to 2 degree range. These include the collapse of the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets, die off of low latitude coral reefs, and widespread abrupt permafrost thaw. To come back to the Amazon, this 2024 paper shows increasing vulnerability of large areas in the Amazon, which due to different stresses such as warming, deforestation, and changes in rainfall, could see itself reaching a tipping point where certain areas would be classified as savanna. Lenten et al. say that an Amazon tipping point could lie within the 20 to 40% range forest cover loss. And seeing as about 17% has been lost since 1970, that is a bit concerning. So keeping the Amazon resilient depends on how much we limit global warming to, and at the local scale, how much we reinforce forest rainfall to avoid droughts through stopping deforestation and increasing afforestation. Basically, we really need to limit temperature increases to avoid these tipping points. Another one that is talked about a lot is the potential collapse of the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC for short. The AMOC is essentially the Atlantic section of the global conveyor belt, which transports heat and salt through the ocean. Crossing a tipping point in the AMOC would lead to global changes in precipitation patterns, amongst many other impacts, with implications for crop production and water security around the world. We know the AMOC has a tipping point, but we don't know yet how far exactly this tipping point is. In the UK, for example, reaching an AMOC tipping point would significantly reduce rainfall and decrease the amount of arable land in yellow. What about the coral tipping point? 99% of tropical corals are projected to be lost if global average temperature rises by 2 degrees. When water temperatures exceed a certain threshold, corals irreversibly expel their algae, resulting in coral bleaching, thereby triggering coral death. Ocean acidification, which I have discussed in another video, worsens this too. So warm water coral is basically fucked, if we don't limit temperatures very significantly. Another important point is the potential synergy and coupling of different tipping points, where one makes another one more likely. For example, Arctic sea ice loss amplifies regional warming, because as ice melts, you essentially replace a white reflecting surface with a darker blue absorbing one, which absorbs more heat, which then melts more ice. This decreases the green ice ice sheets, increasing fresh water in the North Atlantic, which can slow down the AMOC. That was quite a mouthful. There is also some historical evidence of a correlation between monsoon strength in India and temperature changes in Greenland. The potential synergy is what makes it scary. So, due to the numerous uncertainties with tipping points, I think it'd be best if we start getting a move on and decrease the risk of crossing them. It's clear loads of adaptation will need to be done and paid for, but if we mitigate as much as possible, then we can try and save our beautiful world. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to learn more about climate change, don't forget to subscribe.